webinar and uh, thanks professor iman for your kind words and thanks for being back for uh, every webinars after a long period of uh, stop uh, of this webinars uh, thanks professor ahmad nasr for his nice presentation and i think it's a very difficult task for me uh, to present after you dr ahmad but actually because this uh, this is very important topic which is uh, thromboprophylaxis during antenatal and postnatal stages. So uh, I think we have to repeat uh, a lot of information about the same topic, and we have to say it again. And uh, uh, first, I want to know uh, that uh, low molecular weight heparin is very important for VTE thromboprophylaxis. And this is the actual work of uh, low molecular weight heparin. It's not used haphazard. Now uh, it's an era of uh, usage of low molecular weight heparin for many indications, but actually the main indication is uh, VTE thromboprophylaxis. Uh, we sometimes use it uh, during the pregnancy for non-specific indication, and we forget to uh, assess the risk for the female, which is very important to be assessed. And actually, uh, I was talking about some of the uh, colleagues about that we need to uh, put this in Arabic and ask the nurse to help us in the assessment of these risk factors because it's very important, again. So let's start again with this VTE thromboprophylaxis. Uh, next, please. Uh, as Professor Ahmed said, we know that venous thromboembolism in pregnancy and perpidium is very important. And we have to know that the thrombus may be in the venous system and it goes to go to make a problem uh, from deep veins to pulmonary embolism and again. Next. Next, Sarah. Sarah, you hear me? Yes. So let's go through the guidelines of Royal College of Obstetrician and Gynecologists. How is uh, Clixan used in pregnancy and perbidia? Next. So uh, in these recommendations, uh, in pregnant women and women in the perbidia phase who are at risk, all women, should undergo a documented assessment of risk factor for VTE in early pregnancy or pre-pregnancy. And this is very important. And as I said, we, we may need to write this in Arabic and uh, assess all female in the booking visit for this. Women are stratified according to the risk factors into high, intermediate, and low risk. And then they are given the recommended prophylactics. Low molecular weight heparin, including in the uh, inoxaparines, are the agent of a choice for antenatal and postnatal thromboprophylaxis. And all women who have had cesarean section should be considered for thromboprophylaxis. This is very important because we have a very high rate of cesarean section in Egypt. Okay, next. Next. Uh, so the guidelines and recommendations are to reduce the risk of venous thromboembolism, which is very important. Okay. Yes, next. Next. Again, all women should be assessed for the risk, and this is level C, and risk assessment should be repeated. If the woman is admitted to hospital for any reason. This is very important. We assess all women at booking visit. And then again, if the woman needs to admit to the hospital for any reason, we have to reassessment of the risk. And also risk assessment is repeated again, intrapartum and immediate or immediately postpartum. Okay. Next. Uh, so who are at risk for, uh, for VTE? We have women with obstetric risk factors and women with pre-existing risk factors and those with transient risk factors. So we have three groups, actually. Next. 
Next seven. This is a big list, okay? And let's go for this. Women with pre-existing risk factors. Those with previous VTE, except single event related to major surgery, and this is score of four. While those we have uh, VTE provoked by major surgery, takes three. Only beat this one. Yes, please. The existing risk factors. Okay. This one here, here the slide D uh, VTE. Okay. So except single event related to major surgery, take score of four. This uh, related to previous uh, VTE provoked by major surgery, a score of three. Non-high risk thrombophilia, score of three. Medical comorbidities like cancer, heart failure, active systemic lupus, uh, inflammatory polyarthropathy, extras, take score of three. Uh, we have a score of one for family history of unprovoked or estrogen-related VTE in first-degree relative, non-low-risk thrombophilia, age of more than 35 years, obesity, variety of three or more, smoking, and the gross varicose veins. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. You hear me? Yes, 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 we hear you. Professor Hassan? Yes. Yeah, we hear okay. you. Next one. We have obstetric risk factors like preeclampsia in current pregnancy. This is the emergency physician section. While elective cesarean section takes score of one, mid cavity forceps, prolonged labor, postpartum hemorrhage, return births, still births in current pregnancy. Next. We have the transient risk factors. We have any surgical procedures in pregnancy or barbarium except immediate repair of uh, the perineum. Abinsectomy or postpartum sterilization, it takes score of three. Hyperemesis gravidarum, which is very important and takes score of three. We have very and hyperstimulation syndrome, which is very important and takes score of systemic infection, score of one. Immobility or dehydration, score of one. Next. Thromboprophylaxis from 28 weeks. A score of two is 10 days. If admitted to the hospital, antenatally consider thromboprophylaxis. And if prolonged admission for more than three days or readmission to the hospital within the barbarium, we have to consider thromboprophylaxis. Next. Next, how can we manage uh, these risk factors for VTE? Next. Next, Sam. This obstetric thromboprophylaxis. Okay, this one. Uh, we have to assess, as we said, in the antenatal assessment and management uh, previous one, Samir, please. Previous one. Samir, please, previous one. Yes. We have this group of high risk. Any previous VTE except a single event related to major surgery, this is a high risk. 
and this requires antenatal prophylaxis. Next, Samah. Samah, next. This requires antenatal prophylaxis with low molecular weight heparin, and we have to refer to trust in unated uh, thromboprophylaxis team. Previous one, Samah, please. Samah, previous one. In this group, women with previous BTE, except those related to single previous uh, major surgery, they should be offered thromboprophylaxis with low molecular weight heparin throughout the antenatal period. Okay? For this group with hospital admission or single previous BTE related to major surgery, high risk thrombophilia with no BTE, medical comorbidities, any surgical procedure, ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, all of these are intermediate risk, and we have to consider uh, antenatal uh, prophylaxis with low molecular weight heparin. For this group, antenatal thromboprophylaxis for these patients should start as early as possible in pregnancy. Okay, next one. Next, Sema. For all of these risk factors, if we have four or more risk factors, so we have to consider prophylaxis from the first trimester. If we have three risk factors, we have to consider prophylaxis from 28 weeks. If it is less than three, this is loss of dehydration. Next one. Next, Sam. High risk thrombophilia are those with anti thrombin deficiency. Previous one, please. High risk thrombophilia, those with anti thrombin deficiency, factor V Leiden or prothrombin mutation, homozygous, compound heterozygous for factor V Leiden and prothrombin, or protein C or S deficiency. While low risk thrombophilia is factor V Leiden mutation heterozygous and prothrombin mutation heterozygous. Next. For postnatal assessment and management to be assessed, any uh, previous VTE, any more, anyone required antenatal low molecular weight heparin, high risk thrombophilia. Or low risk thrombophilia with family history, this is a high risk and consider at least six weeks of postnatal thromboprophylaxis. Next. All women who have had cesarean section should be considered for thromboprophylaxis with low molecular weight heparin for 10 days after delivery, apart from those having an elective cesarean section, who should be considered for thromboprophylaxis for 10 days after delivery if they have an additional risk factor, and this is very important. Next one. The dose actually is according to the weight. Less than 50, the dose is 20 milligram daily. From 50 to 90, 40 milligram daily. 91 to 130, it's 60 milligram daily. 131 to 170, 80 milligram daily. More than 170 kilogram, the dose is 0.6 milligram per kilogram per day, and it should be in two devices. I did doses. Next.
So again, antenatal thromboprophylaxis for those with previous VTE should begin as early as practical in pregnancy. Women with previous VTE, except those with a single previous VTE related to major surgery, uh, and no other risk factor should be offered thromboprophylaxis with low molecular weight heparin throughout the antenatal period. All women with previous history of confirmed VTE should be offered thromboprophylaxis with low molecular weight heparin or warfarin for at least six weeks postpartum, regardless the mode of delivery. Next. Next one. Again, we, we said this point, which is very important. All women who have had cesarean section should be considered for thromboprophylaxis after delivery 10 days. This is for emergency and for prophylactic, we have to consider another risk factors. Next one, please. This is very important. Low molecular weight heparin are the agents of a choice for antenatal and postnatal thromboprophylaxis. Those is based on the weight, it's very important. It's only necessary to monitor the platelet count if the woman has had prior exposure to unfractionated heparin. This is only. Monitoring of anti-XA level is not important with low molecular weight heparin. The dose of low molecular weight heparin should be reduced in women with renal impairment. And this is very important. If you have a female with preeclampsia and you have impairment of the kidney function, you have to consider readjustment of the dose. And this is very important. Okay. Low molecular weight heparin is safe in breastfeeding. It's it's completely safe. Next. Also, it's very important for low molecular weight heparin to consider risk of bleeding. If you have risk of bleeding in a female, you have to consider which is more important, the risk of bleeding or the risk of thrombosis. So this balance is very important. And this needs cooperation with team of hematology and uh, sometimes surgery to consider the complete risk for the female. Risk of bleeding is very important and should be considered. Also, women with previous or current allergic reaction to low molecular weight heparin should be offered an alternative preparation or alternative form of prophylaxis. Next one. This is the classification of evidence. Next one. Thank you.